we go then, episode 51 of Beat the First Man with me, Reedy. Loads for you coming up on today's show, including on Zooming In, mid-table Gary from Stoke Gabriel and Torbay, Please to look forward to. Stick around for that one. Dad v Lad, fantasy football, the season kicks off. We reveal our lineups for this week's first games. We have got How Old, we've got the name game, we've got Hammer Time. How Old's awesome this week. Awesome. Um, as always, if you are new to the show, please click the subscribe down below. One thing we do like, if you do click the subscribe, click the little bell, because then you never miss another episode. But most of all, if you enjoy the show, give us a like. The views and the likes were down a little bit last week. Boom, boom. Let's rectify that this week. Guys. Get the words out, you know. Tell somebody else that this shit's all right. It's worth a watch. It passes some time. You know, it's this or Love Island, isn't it? Let's be honest. Christ, what would you rather be doing? Anyway, it's time we got the old uh, tit on. Stoke Gabriel and Torbay police time, of course. So, we all got excited last week. It was the first game of the season. There's, there's the shirt, last season's shirt. Um... Plymouth Mahon thinking this was the 100% record, start to the season, the result, say, they lost 6-0. After we built it up like Billio, they lost 6-0. So disappointing start to the season. So they had a game in midweek, they chapter to Bobby Tracy, or Bovey Tracy, Bovey Tracy, Bovey Tracy, I don't bloody know how you pronounce it. Um, they were 1-0 down, but then came the turnaround and suddenly the dream was alive. SGTP were leading 2-1. They were 2-1 up. I was literally at that on Twitter, refreshing. That's me refreshing Twitter. Anyway, 10 minutes after going 2-1 up, it was level at 2-2. But even that, 2-2, let's remember this side didn't even draw a game last season. We're on the verge of a massive point, a verge of a draw, a verge of glory. Oh, fuck's sake. Yeah. They conceded a goal with six minutes to go. By all accounts, it was a decent goal. And, you know, sometimes you have to hold your hands up. But a 3-2 defeat suggests to me things are on the up. This is a big improvement on where we were last season. And I think that first win or draw is not too far away. Somebody is getting put in the slammer. Please joke. Um... This week, Honiton Town come visiting. First home game of the season for Stoke Gabriel and Torbay Police FC. This is the one. Come on, boys. You can do it. We know you can do it. Do not forget, later on the show and zooming in, we are joined by Gary Page, the vice chairman of Stoke Gabriel and Torbay Police, who was the chairman of Stoke Gabriel last season. You may recall, and better, more regular viewers to the show will recall him, after they lost their first 12 games of the season, conceded 116 goals, Gary said we can still finish mid-table. We asked Gary about that later. See what he says. So there we go. Stick around for that. Tits off. Oh, geez, I tell you what, they are so hot. Anyway, time to bring out your best guesses as we play How Old. And this week's is a beauty. Now, obviously, as you know, all we do is we pop up a picture of an old footballer on the screen. And all you have to do is guess how old the footballer was. Now, usually, I'll give you a bit of a spiel about the player's career, what they've done, where they've played. But every now and then, a picture says a lot more than any words I could say. So without further ado, when this photo of Fred Hermans was taken... How old was he? I know. Let's face it, he is a cross between Gerard Houllier and René from Allo Allo. I can't decide which one he looks more like. So we'll be back later in the show to reveal how old Fred Hermans was. Ted will be here to guess as well. Um, good luck, people. Good luck. That's all I'm saying. Two people have guessed on the QT miles away. So good luck with Fred Hermans guessing. So earlier on this week, I caught up with Kian in dad v lad as we're this year we go into fantasy football um we reveal our first team lineups for the season our team names and of course the all important who will be captain this week in the first week of dad v lad fantasy football so without further ado here's dad v lad fantasy football 
So welcome to Dad v Lad Fantasy Football, the follow on from Guess v Knowledge and then Dad v Lad the Euros. So Kian is back. Kian, how are we? Not bad. Not now Kian's a bit of a happy boy today because it's exam results day. How did we do, Kian? <laughs> yeah, it was good. It went all right. Yeah, passed everything you needed to pass. Yeah, exactly. And I don't want to be a scientist anyway, so. Exactly. Who wants to be a scientist? Honestly, <laughs> no one watching this show, that's for sure. Exactly. So we've changed it up. We're going Dad v Lad fantasy football. Now, obviously, you got your ass whooped at Dad v Lad the Euros. So how <laughs> confident are you feeling about Dad v Lad fantasy football? I'm a little bit more confident. You know, I'm, quite, I'm not very bad at fantasy football. Well, OK, this, this is this is big talking. We'll see when we go through our teams <laughs> for the first week. So the way it's going to work each week, me and Keenan made a decision. We're allowed to change our team up until Friday night is the last we can change our team. We'll reveal our teams on Thursday that we're thinking of going with. But then on a Friday night, we're going to screenshot our teams and send them to each other so we know who's playing through. So there's no cheating yeah. going on. So <laughs> we're going to start off, first of all, with uh, the team names. Now, I'm just getting the league up because there has been some absolute beauties that have joined the league. So uh, oh, first of all, what is, uh, what is your team name, Kian? I've gone for... Cock and balls, but spelled like Robin Cock. Ah, a little play on words yeah. with the old uh, Leeds United defender. Exactly. Uh, nice work. I'm impressed. <laughs> uh, not, the, not the only person in the league to use Robin Cock in their uh, team, I hasten to add. <laughs> so uh, we've got uh, Cock Block FC. <laughs> we've got Streak My Cock. That's a good one. That's Harry. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, he's gone with that. Uh, so there's a few others in there. There's no, I mean, we've got Stinks 11. I've got uh, a personal favorite, yeah. I like slide away with the uh, away, like a football. I thought that was a good one, yeah. There's a couple of others I like, which are players' names that have got a little bit of play. So we've got Come Dinya with me <laughs> and uh, Control Alt Delict. It's a good one, I like that one. Uh, I've gone a little bit more boring, but it's just a bit of a dig at all the critics. So I have gone for Burnout No More. <laughs> Evening, Karen. Uh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> there we go. Uh, right, so let's make a start then with our team. So we'll start with our goalies. So who have you got in goal for uh, for this weekend then, Kim? So this weekend I've gone for Sanchez from Brighton. Sanchez from Brighton. So who are Brighton up against on Saturday? Uh, Burnley, I think. Oh, the hot it's shots. A game I, it's a game I think they should be winning and they probably should be keeping a clean sheet in. Free scoring Burnley. <laughs> the, the entertainers. So, the chat. <laughs> so, well, I've gone for uh, Martinez of Aston Villa. Safe choice. Yeah, so well, they're away at Watford. Yeah. I don't see Watford scoring any goals this season. I can't <laughs> lie. So I'm pretty confident of a clean sheet. So I think we're both um I think we're both in with a shout of a clean sheet there. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, right, yeah. let's move on to our defenders. So give me the third that, so what formation have you got, Ken? I've gone four four two. I've gone three five two. Ooh, three five two. Four. Right, well, we'll go we'll we'll take the uh, first of your defenders. So the first one, he's just made his big move to Arsenal, Ben White. Ben White, yeah, good choice. Obviously, ex Leeds, um, Arsenal away at Brentford on their opening game. I've also got Ben White in my team. He's not my first one <laughs> on my list, but I have got Ben White in my team as well. So we might yeah. as well call it now that we've both got Ben White. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, I think people have forgot, finally beginning to wake up to what we told them for years that Ben White yeah. was absolutely <laughs> class. Uh, and now he's got his big move to another mid-table yeah. team. It's just a shame he's not going <laughs> the big club like ourselves. But, you know, we'll, we'll move on from that. So who's your <laughs> uh, your next choice of defender? Next time I've got a Reese James. Reese James. So you've gone for the, the Chelsea connection. Chelsea at home yeah. to Crystal Palace. So surely they're going to get a clean sheet because Palace got to be one of my favourites to get relegated this season. Definitely this year. So I've also got a Chelsea defender. I've got Ben Chilwell. Yeah. So I think we're both going for uh, for Chelsea fullbacks by the looks of things. We both trust Tuchel then. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. And I think Chelsea will keep a few clean sheets, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so your final defender? Uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Trent Alexander-Arnold, Liverpool, who are away at Norwich. Now, he is doubtful from what I understand. 
I might have to change that one out then. <laughs> yeah, because I think he's still injured. Well, obviously he had the injury that he missed the Euros with. Um, yeah. But I don't know whether he, he's bad. I don't know whether there's a little doubtful thing on the screen or not, but... I'll have to have a look later. Yeah, so, well, my other defender is Ruben Diaz. I've got him on the bench. <laughs> yeah, so I've got, obviously, they're away at Tottenham on Sunday. Um, yeah. I don't see Tottenham being an attacking side this year. They're going to try and sneak games like they did with Mourinho. I mean, let's face it, they have just gone for another version of Mourinho, let's be honest. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't see Tottenham scoring a lot of goals, so I've gone for Diaz yeah. and hopefully a clean sheet. Yeah. So, the first of your midfielders. There's five of them. So, yeah. uh, Kai Havertz. Kai Havertz of Chelsea again. Good goal yeah. scoring uh, midfielder. I think he's going to have a big year this year because I think he was just settling in yet, yeah, settling in last year. And then ever since the Euros and in the Super Cup, he's looked really good. So, Havertz. I mean. young, young midfielder. So, the last of my defenders, because obviously I've got four across the battle. Oh, got yeah. Kufal of West Ham. Solid choice again. So they're away at Newcastle. Um, I again, I think Newcastle could be in a bit of trouble this season. The crowd yeah. are back in. They're going to get on Steve Bruce's back. I think they got a re- they have got to start well, Newcastle, because the longer they are struggling at the start, I think they're in trouble. Well, they're in a friendly the other week singing about Bruce out, and it's a friendly. So yeah, I think they could be in trouble. They're going to they're gonna turn on him really, really quick. Yeah. So, right, so now I've got four midfielders and you've got four midfielders left. So let's go with your yeah. next midfielder. Harvey Barnes. Harvey Barnes of Leicester. Uh, yeah. A man who is uh, back from injury, back fighting fit again. So I've gone for, I thought he was good last year before he got injured. Yeah. And I needed someone within his sort of price range that I could fit in. I think it's going to get me some points. So I've gone for Barnes. And famously, snaked us out. Yeah. having agreed to sign for us, then got asked to sign for West Brom on loan. And because they were closer to home, he stayed there. But you know, It wasn't all bad. They called him back. <laughs> exactly. So we'd have looked pretty stupid if we would have had him. I know. So the first of my midfielders and my captain yeah. uh, is Mo Salah. I, uh, I was going to say that next because that's my captain as well. <laughs> <laughs> so Mo Salah could Liverpool away at Norwich. Liverpool always batter Norwich. Yeah, Salah, <laughs> Salah's good for 20, 25 goals a season for definite. Yeah, uh, and I, I had to captain him this week. I couldn't. I had no one else I could choose really to captain this week. Yeah. So Salah is in your team as well, then. So shall I go yeah. with my next midfielder then? Yep. Yeah. So I've gone Mason Mount. He's also in my team. <laughs> ah, now it hurts to put Mason Mount. In. It hurts because he was in that derby yeah. team. So I don't like putting him in, but I've had to put him in. I can't see that. Yeah, same. And again, Palace at home. I just think there's assists up for grabs there. So Definitely, uh, yeah. Mason Mount. And you've gone Mount as well. So um, yeah, yeah, we're pretty similar <laughs> here in midfield so far. I know, yeah. Uh, my next midfielder is the Brazilian wonder boy, the one and only. Look out, Premier League. He's back for another year. Rafinha. You're not going to believe it, but he's mine as well. <laughs> <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> so we're so, nearly the same midfield. So Rafinha, I think, here, right? So why was Rafinha not being talked about for some huge, huge transfers this summer? I don't get it. He just loves us. Well, yeah, it might be, but like, <laughs> people are talking silly, silly money for midfielders yeah, who are yeah. nowhere near as good as him. Rafinha is just... In his first season with no crowds. Oh, he's ridiculous. He's been insane. He's been so good. He is ridiculous. And I just, I'm amazed that nobody's tried to come. Don't get me wrong. I'm delighted nobody's come in for him. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> I'm just stunned that nobody's gone for him. Yeah, same. I, I think he's one of the better ones that aren't. I mean, he could get in some of the big six sides. Oh, definitely. And I think with yeah. crowds, he's going to be even better. Because that's what he'd thrive off. He thrives off. He doesn't yeah. do his skill for empty stadiums, does he? I mean, I can't wait. We're obviously sat in, you know, we've got tickets for Everton at home, first game of the season. We're yeah. sat on the East Stand, which is on the wing. So when he's down that wing in front of us, I cannot oh, wait no. to see him <laughs> on that wing in front of us. It's just going to be brilliant. I'm so excited yeah. to see him, see him live in the flesh. So yeah. so who is your other midfielder then? Um, oh, it's Mount. I've said him. That's my five. No, I reckon you still got one left because I've still got one left. I've, no, I've gone Havertz, Barnes, Salah, Rafinha, Mount. I, so I started mine before. I started my one before because I got three at the back. 
And how many you got up front? Two. I think you're still a player short. I don't think I, I'm not sure I am. I've still got one midfielder left to pick. You've only um, given. Out, have you missed out one of my defenders? Oh, who was that? Oh, no, I've not missed that one, but I've got I've, so far. I've gone Sanchez. Yeah. White, White, James, Alexander, Arnold. Yeah. Havertz, Barnes, Salah, Rafinha, Mount. Havertz, Barnes, Salah, Rafinha, Mount. Yeah. And then you've got the two strikers. Oh well, I've obviously got a midfielder still to call then. I think, yeah, because you, you went for four defenders. So when I started my first midfielder, you were still doing defenders. Oh, geez, we need to get slicker at this, that's for sure. <laughs> right, so my other midfielder, and this pains me to put him in, but I did have to put him in in the end. I've, put, I've gone Jack Grealish. Yeah, I, I was doing, I was definitely going to. Until and I don't, even think, I don't even think he's that good. <laughs> I never have done. I've never thought he's that good, but he's going to get assists because he'll fall over a lot. He's going to get goals. So I've stuck Jack Grealish in my team. I was thinking about it, but I don't know how much, he, I don't know if he's going to start or anything. So I He, he might be week. transferred by the end of August. Because <laughs> he annoys me. Um, right, let's go with the strikers then. This is where it all counts. So I've got to be honest, I'm a little disappointed with my strikers, but it was all the money I had left. I'm, I've gone heavy on my midfield. I'm quite happy with my attack. All right, okay. So, Give us the first of your strikers well, then. First, we've got the very prolific, excellent striker, Patrick Bamford. Now, you see... Never, never giving him any stick. You liar. <laughs> so, I was going to go Bamford, but I don't believe in the whole second season syndrome. But I think for individuals, it could be yeah. relevant. And I'm not sure he's going to get as many goals this season as he did last season. He might. I hope he does. But I'm not <laughs> convinced. So, I've gone for Ollie Watkins. Yeah. And I've made him vice-captain. Ooh. Because Bamford's my vice captain. Because they've got uh, Watford away. The only yeah. slight thing is he is seventy percent certain to play, thirty percent doubtful. All right. <laughs> but I'm going to go for glory. I'm going to play. I'm going to leave him in. I think he'll be fit, yeah. so I'm going to play him. So I've gone Ollie Watkins. So who's your other striker? My second one is Mikel Antonio. Oh yeah, Mikel Antonio. Yeah, good choice. Good choice. Definitely assists and goals there, I think. Yeah. And he's just a bully, isn't he, up top? Well, I've gone for the uh, the ultimate flat track bully, the penalty taker, supreme. I've gone for Jamie Vardy. Che. Scores a lot of penalties. Yeah. Does, you know, regularly chips in with between 12, 15 goals. So yeah, I've, yeah. I've gone Vardy. I've actually made Vardy my vice captain, not Watkins. <laughs> yeah, mine's Bamford. So that all that leaves is your four substitutes. So who have you got on the bench that's not made the team? Uh, Foster, the cycling GK. Well, I've gone the same. I've gone Foster, the cycling GK uh, as well. He, just had to, he had to be in there, didn't he? Yeah. Uh, Ailing. I've gone Connor Cody. He was a little bit unlucky not to get in. Yeah. Diaz. Billy Gilmore, the uh, Scottish Iniesta. <laughs> and then one because I was just running out of money, Obafemi. I know this one, I'm so close to putting him in and leaving Watkins out. I'm so close to switching them. And I'm going to think about it until the end of tonight. I've got Ivan Tony. Yeah. And I'm literally, I'm so, so close to putting Ivan Tony in the team. I just can't decide because I think he's going to score against Arsenal. I'm convinced he's going to score against <laughs> Arsenal. And I, I'm going to decide tonight whether or not he starts. Yeah. Right. So there's our team. So... The only one question left to ask, simple enough. Are you using any of your bench boost or your triple captain this week? I was very tempted. Ooh. Very tempted with Salah against, against Norwich. Yeah. I thought, but I've not gone for it. I'm going to leave it until the double game week, I think. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's going to do it. Surely the double game week is your triple captain week. Yeah. yeah. It's got to be. It'd, be. it'd be mad not to. So one other thing. So we've pushed the league out there. So at the moment we have in our league, one, two, three, four, four. We've got about 13 or 14 people. So if you want to join our league, get on Twitter. Yeah. It's on Kean's Twitter. It's on my Twitter. Get on and join the league. It's free. There will be a prize for the winner. It won't be a very big prize. 
just putting that out there because someone messaged me and said i'm only in it for the prize um <laughs> so it is only a small prize um but it'll be a bit of a laugh so next week we'll come on we'll look at what scores we've got we'll pick our teams for uh, for the week after and we'll have some fun with it and hopefully going yeah. forward we'll get some of the other um players in the league to come on this little uh, segment of the show as well yeah cool right well kian Good luck with your fantasy football team. I hope you score 10 less points than me to get me in front, get me off to a flyer. I'm going to go off and discover whether I should be playing Ivan Tony or Ollie Watkins. You need to go off and discover whether you're dropping Trent Alexander-Arnold or not. We'll Check. screenshot our teams by, let's say, let's say seven o'clock tomorrow night. That's got to be the rule. All right, yeah. Because the Arsenal game kicks off at eight, doesn't it? So we'll say by seven o'clock oh, yeah, tomorrow night. Yeah. We'll screenshot the teams. We'll swap teams so we've both got them and we know there's no yeah. cheating going on in the background. All right. So for That's now, awesome. that was Dad V Lad Fantasy Football. So, Kian, we'll see you next week. See you in a bit. And for now, it's back to the show. There we go then. So, well done to Kian on his exam results. That's the first thing we should say from everyone on the show. There's only me and him. That's it, really. Um, next week, we'll reveal who wins week one and, of course, your selection, our selections for week two. Don't forget, join the Beat the First Man Fantasy League. If you follow us on Twitter, get on there. The link is on there. Join the league. Free to enter. There is a small prize at the end of the season. It's not a big prize, as the person who messaged me was, he was only in it for the prize. Well, he's going to be sadly disappointed. So join the league. It is free. It's all a bit of fun. And I'm hoping to get some of the contestants from the league on the show at some stage during the season. So, the road to Wembley. We started last week in the FA Cup, the extra preliminary round. So you know how it works. We pick a team in the early rounds of every single cup competition. Last week, we picked the match at Harborough Town and Rothwell Corinthians. So, I made plans to go and watch Harborough Town and Rothwell Corinthians last week in the FA Cup extra preliminary round. And... I was going to go with Kian and Harry, my other lad. We were all going to go and watch the FA Cup, get involved, maybe do a bit of filming. Really add some spice to the show. So I Googled it and it was one o'clock kickoff. And it was too late. We couldn't get it sorted in time, so we didn't go. We actually went to another match instead. We went and watched Oldby Town against Stamford. Stamford ran out 2-0 winners for anybody out there who's interested in the result between Oldby Town and Stamford. Anyway... All we care about is who won out of Harbour and Rothwell. It was Harbour Town. Harbour Town running out 2-0 winners. So they are now our team for the FA Cup. That is who we follow. That's who we support. And it's quite simple. As we go through, we follow and support whichever team gets through. Now, it could get interesting further on down the line. So, in the preliminary round, they have another home tie. We will check the kickoff time on this one. We might even make the effort to go. They are at home against Biggles Wade FC. So the rules are simple. We cheer on Harbour Town. Up the bees. Come on, Harbour. Wembley, Wembley. We beat the first man and this is road to Wembley. Wembley. Yes, there we go. So, this bad boy joined the show last week, didn't he? What time is it? Hammer time! Yes, indeed, it's hammer time. So, this is where we celebrate a team who's dished out hammering over the weekend. In fact, what we like to call hammer time. And rather than just ignore the fact they've thrashed someone, we celebrate it. We go in big on the team that done it. Now, word obviously got round about hammer time, and the defence is all tightened up. I was struggling to find one, to be honest. So the rules are, it has to be by six goals or more, um, the victory. And I was really struggling. But thankfully, Celtic stepped up to the plate and ensured we had one. So newly promoted Dundee travelled to an out-of-sorts Celtic. Remember, Celtic had struggled out of the Champions League, lost their first league game. Dundee went there probably thinking, we got a chance here. 20 minutes gone, weathered the storm, 0-0. Looking good. Not looking good for Hammer Time or any other part of any other show that anybody does. But however... Two goals in five minutes from Kyogo Furuhashi ensured the hoops led 2-0 at the break. Still a million miles away from six, let's be honest. Within four minutes of the restart, Tom Rogic has made it 3-0. But hammer time! It's still a long way off, isn't it? Let's be honest. So at midway at the point of the half, though, Furuhashi completed his hat-trick. Suddenly it's 4-0. The nerves setting in in the Dundee defence, knowing they could become victims of hammer time! But six minutes to go. Anthony Ralston, full back, 5-0. It's on now. One more goal 
one more goal and we dish out. Hammer time! So, injury time. Still 5-0. Step forward, Jordan Marshall of Dundee to ensure we get it. He decides to uh, not only get himself sent off, but give away a penalty. So, which Edson or Odson Edward, sorry, stepped up and neatly slotted in the top corner. So, as is now the tradition with Hammer Time! The chair is Dundee, the hammer is Celtic. What time is it? Hammer Time! One, two, three, four, five, six. Celtic FC, Hammer Time! Did we say hammer time enough? Um, there you go. So anyway, this little fella is back. All right, Ted. Yes, Reedy son, I'm okay. It's all very casual, Ted. What's going on? Well, it's the new Premier League season starting this weekend. I am buzzing. Of course it is, Ted. So who are you back in this season? Well, Reedy, I've decided to give you the benefit of my predictions rather than giving you a little knob of the week. Really, Ted? This is pretty groundbreaking. You've done knob of the week since you came on this show. This is groundbreaking stuff. Well, I've decided I need my own bit on this show. I've created a slot for myself. I've got rid of the little knob of the week. I'm going to be nice to people. So this part of the show will now be called Ted's Treble. Oh, for fuck, Ted. Ted, what, what the hell? What on earth? Well, simply put, I'm going to tell people where to put their money at the weekend to win big and go to the boozer. So you're going to give us a treble for people to back. What, so why are they going to the boozer? Really, are you thick? They're going to win big. They're going to go and celebrate in the boozer. OK, right. Well, if this is your new feature, let's have the first part of your treble then, shall we? Easy one. Liverpool to win at Norwich. Yeah, OK, I can't disagree with it, Ted. I'm not going to lie. Newly promoted side, first game. It could be tricky, though, you know. Maybe a bit of a sticking point. Really, Delia Smith's boys have got no chance. She needs to stick to baking cakes. She doesn't play, Ted. She's just the owner. Liverpool win, easy. OK, well, let's have part two then. Man United, my boys, against Leeds. Um, Ted, since when have Man United been your boys? You could be kicked off the show for this. Um, they sign good players. They might win the league. I'm going to support them. That's not how football works. It is in my world. Anyway, so the bet for this one, Reedy, is over two and a half goals. Over two and a half goals, Man United v Leeds. Right, OK. So last year, obviously, it was a 6-2 win, so you'd have won your money. But Leeds' defence has tightened up, man. They were one of the best defences at the end of last season. They hardly let any goals. Reedy, I'm telling you, over two and a half goals, nailed on, most of them in the Leeds net. You are in, in for trouble, in big trouble. There'd be nothing going in the Leeds net this weekend. Whatever. OK, well, let's have the third part of Ted's treble then, shall we? Again, easy one. Leicester to beat Wolves. Leicester are a shit version of a bear. Leicester are a shit version of a bear. No, Wolves are a shit version of a bear. OK, if you're going to do a segment, get it right. I'm not being funny. It was a simple mistake. It was a simple mistake, Ted, but you can't be making them. So let's have the third part of your treble again, shall we? Leicester to beat Wolves. And why will Leicester beat Wolves? Because Wolves are a shit version of a bear. Well done, Ted. Um, so, but the, the, hang on, Wolves and bears are nothing like each other. They're completely different. Yeah, exactly. A shit version of a bear. Okay, but so is there anything else to why you think Leicester will beat Wolves? Is that not enough? Well, I would like a little bit of insight or, you know, foxes are more like bears than wolves. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So, is it goodbye little knob of the week forever now, Ted? Are we not seeing it again? I'm going to bring it back every now and then. Maybe we'll do little knob of the month. But from now on, this section is Ted's treble. Get your money on it, people. OK, well, I'll be sure to put a couple of quid on it. It's paying just under three to one, Ted. I had a look, so I'll put a couple of quid on it and we'll see, uh, we'll see where we go. So are you still coming back for how old the reveal or have you chummed that off as well? Oh, no, don't you worry. I will be back for... Oh, I've got a lot to say about that fella. OK, Ted, right, we'll, uh, we'll see you later. OK, so zooming in. On this week, zooming in, well, what can I say? After months of promising you, we finally got mid-table Gary from Stoke Gabriel and Torquay, Torquay, Torbay Police on zooming in. 
So for those who don't know, Gary Page was the chairman of Stoke Gabriel when they started the season badly last year. He was the one who fronted up, did the interviews, and he said he felt Stoke Gabriel could finish mid-table. We had a bit of fun with that. We called him Mid-Table Gary. It became his new nickname. We had a bit of a laugh. He's been a brilliant throughout. He was great on here. Some brilliant bits about how the merger came about, some good bits about what their plans are as a club, how they dealt with last season, why they kept going. He's just a genuine football man and we need more characters like that in non-league football so for now sit back drink some coffee here is zooming in with uh, mid-table gary so welcome to zooming in and i am delighted to say no ecstatic to say i am joined tonight by no less than mr gary page the chairman of stoke gabriel and torbay police fc aka mid-table gary we will come on to that in a little while gary do not worry gary how are we, my friend? Good to see you in the flesh at last. Hey there, Mark. Everything okay? Uh, yes, very, very, very well, mate. And uh, I'm delighted to have you on here. I know we've talked about it for ages. We were going to get you on. I thought the start of this season was the perfect opportunity to do so. Yeah, yeah it's good to, good to be on and good to be talking to you again. Yeah. So just message you. No, no, exactly that. So, um. Before we get into the whole Stoke Gabriel and then the Stoke Gabriel and Torbay Police, how did you personally get involved with Stoke Gabriel from, from the offset, Gary? Because you don't sound like a, a local resident of that area, if you don't mind me asking. No, I, have, I haven't got a tractor uh, accent, so you're all right. Nor, nor a cider accent, so yeah, yeah, you can probably understand me a bit better. <laughs> no, no, initially, um, I got involved with, with, with Stoke Gabriel when my lad James... Um, rocked up when he was about 14, 14 and a half, um, to join the youth section. So he progressed um, through there. Um, and it was just a case of like standing on the touchline at training, week in, week out, rain, shine, win or lose. Um, and I just offered me, me services to actually be involved in the club. Unfortunately, um, the actual squad he was in um, declined. And uh, he broke up, so he had a he had about twelve months out of the club. But I still went and helped and helped out with various things. But he uh, he went on to um, developing a, a local side called South South Saints West, um, which was part of the Southampton group, but not as much as people think they are. Yeah. So he went he went back to that, um, and then he joined the uh, the under sixteens back again and then uh, progressed up there. Now he's in my under-18 squad that I run. And, and how, did you, uh, how did you end up becoming chairman? Yeah, long story cut short, that is. Um, <laughs> because the club was in decline and it was, lead, it was leading up to COVID and um, there was some ups and downs within the club and, you know, leaving the politics out to the side because I don't think we got long enough to go into that. But... Due to, the, due to the COVID situation and the amount in debt uh, with the club as well, it was just financially viable that, you know, people, the older part of the committee, just didn't see any gain of working in the club throughout the COVID period. Right. So, unfortunately, um, myself, um, Rich, Rich Organ, and his wife, Nicola, who was the treasurer at the time, and also um, a guy called Adam Shearer, who's been at the club and he started the youth section off at the club many, many years ago. Been around the game a long time. We decided, you know, do we or don't we close the club? Do we shut the gate for good and get back to the Football Foundation? Or do we actually, you know, give it a go and severe and persevere with it? And here we are today. We've, we've, we've come through the COVID situation. Yeah. Um, and we, we we put we put a lot of pressure on the young under 18s to fulfil a role going out week in week out in in the highest league possible um, because two of the adult teams actually walked before COVID as well because they couldn't see no future in the club either. Yeah. So obviously that's where that's probably the perfect place to pick up the story. Obviously I. I had only started this point. I'd been doing this about probably three or four episodes when your story of the start to your season probably first broke, which was that you were you were suffering some horrendous hammerings, um, which 
is self-explanatory given the fact you were playing basically kids in what is a very competitive top quality league let's let's be honest there will be people that don't realize quite how good the quality will be you it's it's a corner of the country that a lot of people will never leave and you get an awful lot of good footballers that stay in that corner of the country and don't go anywhere um and you were taking some fearful beatings and we kind of you know I, I decided to take you on and, and adopt you as a little sort of pet thing with the podcast and how difficult was that week in week out going and, and watching these boys taking what essentially was a real thumping at times I mean I mean initially we had you know between the COVID situation and the decision of the four of us taking on the club we only had around about eight to ten weeks before the actual league started and we initially said, right, there's one candidate who came in. Um, at the, he was only a South Devon League manager, um, but he came in, did the job for about six or seven games, and he was just getting hammered week in, week out. Didn't really have any confidence in the players he got. So we offered, well, we, we all offered the, the under-18s to come in um, and just bolster up the side with a bit of bit of freshness and a bit of, bit of enthusiasm, really. Yeah. Um, I think... It wasn't the fact it was getting the armour in. It was the fact that Phil Cox, who runs the league down here, he 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 hundred percent was behind us all the way. And he says for a team to go out week in week out, rain or shine, you turned up, you played, you walked off that field as a club. And he yeah. says, I am. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I actually said, because when I had Josh on here, Josh Organ, obviously, if, for those that don't know, Josh was the goalkeeper at the time. It was, it was uh, unfortunately the one, and it's always the one that gets the finger pointed because he's the keeper, even though I know for a fact he was playing really well. And I said to him at the time, I said, you've probably got the biggest bollocks of any young man I've ever known because to keep doing that week in, week out takes some serious mental strength and some serious character to keep going back for more each week. And I held my hat up to him. I thought, you know, fair play to you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we had a couple of keepers come in and they, you know, after two or three games, they just they just couldn't stand the, the battering each week because they just thought they didn't have anybody in support in front of them. Yeah. But that, that's not the case of all, at all. If you're going out to play as a team on a field, you walk off as a team. And that's always been my philosophy. When I used to play, yeah, you know, and and I try and put that through the under 18s when when the new squad comes in, um, I try and put that enthusiasm through them. You walk off as a team, you walk on as a team, win or lose. No, and credit to you all, and I think as a club, like you say, to come out of it the other side, and we'll get onto the merger in a minute. I think you know, I, I think everyone should just stand and applaud you for coming through it all and battling through it because I think it was a fantastic effort. Everyone is desperate for that first victory to come and it will come and we know it will come. And I know for a fact last night, you you know, I was on Twitter when you were 2-1 up, frantically refreshing Twitter, praying you were going to hang on for a 2-1 win. But, you know, it wasn't to be, but it's getting closer and you can feel it coming, can't you? It's, it does feel like it's literally just around the corner. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, we've, we've put faith in, in Dennis, um, Dennis Perry and his, his coaching staff. Um, Luke Joyner, um, his assistant, who was initially with the with the old squad when we was going through the COVID problems. You know, we, we were sat, well, I was sat in the in the, in the stand last night with Rich and everybody else, and you know, we, we was like, yes, we we we're, we're, we're actually going to do this, and we was on the edge of our seats at one point, <laughs> and it, it just felt like it, it was turning, and then when that third goal went in, we was like, oh, I didn't feel deflated at all. It was just. Yeah. It was it was just an unlucky and it was just a good strike, but that's that's football at the end of the day. Yeah, it's one of those, isn't it? That, like you say, it is football. So before we get on to the merger, Garrett, we've got we've got to ask because I read your comments when I first got the story, and at the time you'd lost twelve out of twelve. I think it was one hundred and sixteen you'd conceded. I was desperately trying to find the information that I had, but I couldn't find. It. I think it was one hundred and sixteen, and you'd lost twelve out of twelve. Now, I'm going to quote you. You said you still felt you could put a run together and finish mid-table. So, Gary, come on, explain to us all how it was going to happen. Yeah, but I didn't say which team, though, did I? 
<laughs> very good, very good. <laughs> well, I, must, I must say, my under 18s did finish fourth in the league, so you know. Ah, well, there you go. So, well, no, see, that's quite cute. You've done us all up like a kipper. So, I've been calling you mid table Gary for the whole of last season. Turns out that you were talking about another team. Well, exactly. You know, still <laughs> part of the club. Uh, there you go. That's a fantastic gal. I'm very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, as the, as the old saying goes, you know, when, when you've been a footballer and you've been a manager and obviously with with the with the height of, you know, taking over a club and steering a club in, in, in very, very difficult circumstances. You know, I, I grew up with grassroots football, um, playing on council pitches back in, back in Albury in Birmingham. Yeah. Um, alongside my good friend, who I've just met up, met up with after a long, long time, um, the one and only Colton Palmer. Right. Okay. I grew, I grew up with him. I played football with him, and he went off and had a professional career. And he 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 got he got refused at Chelsea and for an injury, and he had to come back. And he started at West Brom, and it was um, it was Nobby Styles who turned round to him at the time and said, "Look, Colton, whatever you do." Don't go for the money. If you want to play football, play football. That's what you want to do. Yeah. And and it it rubs off. It rubs off. You know. At the end of the day, you just get out there, put your boots on, and just do your best. Yeah. And uh, and he and there's a classic example of a man who and this I don't mean this disrespectfully to him because he's far more ability than I will ever have because he's played at the top level of football. But I watched him at Leeds many times. And the one thing you could never fault Carlton for was his effort and his work rate. You could never, ever criticise that. He gave 110% every single week. He might not have been the greatest footballer on the pitch at that time, um, but you knew what you were getting from him every week. Exactly, exactly. And when I met up with him now, he took over as manager of Brantham Town. You know, when I went down and sat down side of him, he didn't know it. He didn't know I was going and he just turned around and said, oh, God, just sit down, sit with the first half of me, and we'll, we'll have a chat at the end of the game, which yeah. we did. And he hasn't changed. He hasn't changed one iota. He's, he's still a black country boy through and through, and he'll never change. No, fair play. So anyway, tell us, Gary, how did this come about? So for those who don't know, Stoke Gabriel merged with Torbay Police in the summer. You are now Stoke Gabriel and Torbay Police FC. Um, how did how did that all come about? Who, where did was that something that had been in the offering for a while, or was it kind of a very quick thing that just happened, almost like an overnight thing? Well, um, it, 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 it came through um, Rich uh, Josh's dad initially, because um, Torbay Police was looking for pitch rental, and they approached Stoke Gabriel and Torbay Police um, probably about three stroke four years ago, and they was just predominantly hiring pitches to play games and do training. And that's where, that's where the Torbay police initially came into it. Yeah. Um, but we, 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 we four like me, Adam, Nicola and Rich, we, we looked at all, all avenues, as you can imagine, we looked at financial, do we do it for financial benefit? Do we run the club as a business? Just, we, do we just do the youth section and have it as a youth, youth club? We looked at every avenue you could think of, and it was Rich that came up with the idea. I I went down the route of trying to get a link with a, a professional football club, which didn't end very well. Yeah. Um, they they use the pitches um, on occasions. Um, we helped them out immensely, um, but unfortunately, that 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 never materialised. So we fell back, um, and we went to. Richie's idea of, you know, shall we go and talk to Torbay Police? And it was Torbay Police that approached us and said, you know, should we sit there and have a chat? And that's what happened. Um, we had many, many meetings over many, many months. Um, well, weeks, really, because we hadn't got a lot of time left. And then on the 1st first, first of August, 1st uh, of June, sorry, we amalgamated and became one club, Stoke Gabriel and Torbay Police. We we banded that many names around about changing the name, getting rid of the old Stoke Gabriel, but we wanted to keep both histories because Stoke yeah. Gabriel was formed 1905 down on the local village green and Torbay Police was formed in 1969. Right, okay, so you plenty of, his, plenty of history in both clubs then, you don't want to lose, lose either. Yeah, so we didn't want to get rid of 
any history of both clubs, so that's why we formed both names and run with both names. Um, you know, and hopefully the club will go from strength to strength. So what I've I've virtually done, I've took a back seat. I've come down to be vice chairman. Right. Okay. I thought, I thought it was a good idea um, to consolidate, step back, let another chairman come in who might have fresh ideas, and try and move the club forward in a better way. Fair play. And as a man who does a, a comedy, oh, I say comedy, I'll use that in the loosest term possible, um, football show, the fact that you merge with a team who are basically to do with the police department genuinely was like a gift. So can I thank you for that? Yeah, well, you know, it's all a, it's all a, your uh, your podcast every week. So, yeah, it, it, it does raise an eyebrow. It, it was um, genuine. It was, when I got the text, it was genuinely be- I just sat there and went, oh, thank you. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> I mean, initially, I mean, Torbay Police was formed really to give underprivileged kids the opportunity to play sport um, and not get charged to the earth for it, like where some clubs a lot of charge 65, 70 pound a month yeah. just to turn train and probably not even get a game. Right. But we, we we like Torbay Police's philosophy where, you know, kids can come along, enjoy the game, not particularly win a game, but just get out and enjoy a kickabout with your, with your friends on a Sunday. Yeah. And if you win, if you win, it's a bonus. Um, so that's that was that was one of our ethos is to take on. And also their volunteer base was a little bit stronger than ours at the time. Um, but it, it, it will hopefully go from str- the first season is always going to be the hardest because yeah, you've got course. two clubs, two, two totally different ideas of running the club. Um, Torbay Police turned up, paid the refs, paid the pitch, paid the pitches, and then obviously rocked off. Yeah, but having to run facilities of our size, where we've got a main pitch, we've got uh, a second pitch where we where we rent, and we also got mini pitches and a third pitch down the road. So it's a it's a lot to take on in a short space of time. So it's a big learning curve for both clubs, um, and hopefully, you know, we'll consolidate. And then at the end of the season, we'll sit down and say, "How did we do? Where did we go wrong? And what can we what can we work on to make it better for the second season?" Yeah, I mean that beautifully leads me on to what I was just about to say. What what are you, essentially were your hopes for this season? I'm guessing it is like you say a bit of consolidation and and you know if you can finish outside the bottom three or four, then happy days. Yeah, well the the idea was initially I, I had an idea of having a pathway, so all the youngsters don't go to another club; they come right through the ranks, right from the under eights, right the way through the youth section. And we've, we've took on a guy called Terry. He's going to be running the new under-16s for the club. Um, it's going to be my last season as an under-18s manager because um, I want to concentrate on something else within the club. Yeah. Um, but having that pathway where youngsters can actually have the ability to go into the development team and also into the Step 7 team, plus also with the insight of going into the main team and working the way, way through. It's, it's just having that that scope of not having to go elsewhere. You're always going to get another players coming in. Yeah. You're never going to stop. That. You're never going to stop that. But hopefully, what we want to try and stop is players going away. Just keep them at the club and just nurture them and bring them through the ranks. Yeah, because essentially, any any town or village with a, with a, a non league team or, or a grassroots team, whatever you want to call it. it people in the village or the town will always buy into it a lot more if there's local kids who have come through the ranks and are playing in that team. No matter what anybody says, that is just a fact. And I would say it's the same in the pro game. The pro game, sorry, if, if you, uh, you're, I know you're a Villa fan, for instance, there's nothing you love better than seeing one of your own coming through and performing at the top level. Yeah, I mean, we never wanted to be an academy. Um, we, we wouldn't want the status of the club being an academy. Hmm. We just want it to be a grassroots football club um, where kids can come and enjoy themselves. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, Villa lost one of their own over the last few days, but we won't go into that. But, you know, fair play to, fair play to Jack. If he wants to go off and win trophies and play at Champions League level, let him, let him crack, crack on because I'd never stand in the way of a player who wants to progress and, and do better for themselves. And I can guarantee probably Jack will be back in five years' time at the Villa. We shall, we shall bookmark that one and remember it for the future. <laughs> so we've got, 
we got we got Ashley Long back, so you know you never know. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, it, it, it took a while for him to come back, but you did get him back in the end, didn't you? To be fair. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things I'm doing this year is the road to Wembley, where I've chosen the FA Cup, the FA Bars and the FA Trophy. And I'm starting right in the very, very first round. Now, you could say it's a bit of a coincidence, but in the Vars, I've chosen the game between Torpoint and Callington for my uh, extra preliminary round game. Now, it might be a little bit of a setup so that I definitely get you boys in the FA Vars. So the FA, how good was it? Because I, I used to be involved in a, in a club called Whitney Town many years back and we reformed and we started again. And I know what it was like trying to get in those FA competitions. It's not easy in your first season or your second season because there's a lot of administrational red tape to go through. And with you being a newly merged team, I can imagine that threw some red tape in the way. So how relieved or pleased were you when you got that acceptance into the bars? Um, well, we, we, we did discuss it with the league and said, you know, what's, what's the capability of us entering any cups at all as a new club? And they said, just enter as your initial clubs that you are already. So Torbay Police entered and we entered as two different clubs. Um, the, the, the paperwork side of it, the league took all care of that because they knew that the, the merger was going to happen. Yeah. So that got us into it but when we got the when we got the draw of having a boy in the first round it was like could it be going our way but i'm not i'm not even gonna say how far we're gonna get because i know you'll hold me to that but <laughs> we'll see what happens with tour points in callington that let's get it let's get the first one out of the way well i'm gonna i'm gonna call it now i'm gonna call it you win that first round really yeah, I'm calling it now. And I know nothing about the other two teams. I'm just calling it. Yeah, well, Tor, Tor, Point, Tor Point's a strong team. Um, Rich went and see, saw Callington the other night and he wasn't that impressed with them. So I personally think we'll probably get drawn Tor Point away and it'll yeah. be on a Tuesday or a Wednesday night. It'll be a 7.30 kickoff and it'll be an absolute nightmare to get to their ground. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> That's that's filled me with great confidence. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, you know, it's like I said, it's like I said to Dennis. Though, I said, you know, just just take just take each game as it comes. Um, you know, six games in. You know, if he's not doing too well, we ask the question as any chairman or any football club would. Yeah. Um, but we've got to give him the benefit of the, of the doubt, being a new form club, and also. He's got 110% backing from all the guys at the club to do well with that side, as well as Mickey Marshall with the uh, Step 7 side. Yeah. We, don't, we don't put any side over above anything else other than the Step 6 side is the highlighted club because they're playing at the highest level. Yeah, of course. So that make, makes total sense. So let's move away from Stoke Gable just for a second and we will we'll briefly come back just for the end of the call. So... It's only right that I let you pick your five-a-side team too. Everyone else gets to do it. So it's only right, Gary, that I give you the opportunity to pick your five-a-side team. So it's your ultimate five-a-side team. The only rules, you have to have seen them play live. One yeah. goalie, one defender, two midfielders, one striker. So let's start, if you don't mind, with your goalkeeper. Who are you going for between the sticks? Well, it was a, it was a tough decision, but I've... I've seen him play in my younger years and I've I've no doubt of it, I'll have to go for Peter Shilton. Right, OK, yeah. No doubt of it, he's had uh, 1,005 appearances. Yeah. Um, and he actually scored once when he was with Leicester from 1966 to 1974, I believe. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, at least he scored one goal. <laughs> um, nas national team. He had uh, 125 appearances and he's still holding that record because he's the longest service, serving one who's held that many caps. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd have to put him between the sticks, no doubt he blew. F fantastic goalkeeper. Lives about a mile down the road from me. He lives in the next village. Um, yeah. And uh, by all accounts, a very, very nice chap as well from what I'm led to believe. So, um, yeah, no, Peter Shield, very difficult to anyone of our era. Gary, I think it's very difficult to argue. He, and to be fair, he was actually robbed of a lot more caps because rather famously, uh, Ron Greenwood used to alternate him, didn't he, with Clemens? He never actually picked a number one. 
Yeah, yeah, and, and you'd also got Wood, Woody. You know, you got you got Woody in the background coming through the ranks as well, through the under twenty ones, under twenty threes, and you know, you know, like Carlton said to me, he says, I asked him about the top five then, and he says, you know, I'd have, I'd have gone for Chris Woods, doubtably. He said, but now you've gone for Shield, and he said, yeah, you you picked the right one. Right, good stuff. So, who are we having in front of uh, Mr. Shilton then? Um, that was another de- decision I'd got to come to because there was quite a few defenders in our era, but no doubtably I'd have to go for Rio, Rio Ferdinand. And solid, no. solid, 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 at, solid at the back. Um, he was, you know, in all the three FIFA World Cups and... 514 appearances, what, 11 goals. Yeah. Um, played uh, 81 appearances for England, scored three goals, but dom- dominated that back line immensely for, for any club, you know, when he started at West Ham, when he was uh, in the youth, youth section. Yeah. And then he worked his way through and um, finished his career at Queen's Park Rangers. And, and obviously now he's a pundit. And he, he, throughout his life, he's gone through a lot of turmoil recently. Um, but he's come through everything. He's been strong, but as a player, no doubt he's got to be Rio. Yeah, and I would I would even argue he's probably his game actually would suit now probably better than when he actually played, and he was great when he played. But if he was playing now, I think he'd be. Oh, people would just be wouldn't be able to stop talking about him. No doubt. Yeah, no doubt. So, no, as much as uh, I loved Rio when he was at Leeds, obviously I detested him when he went over the hills and played for that other mob that we don't like to talk about. But, um, you know, he was uh, he's a class act. I, I'm, I'm big enough to hold my hands up and say when there's a class act that plays over there. <laughs> yeah, well, he, well, he had a good... He had, I mean, he only had, what, two seasons at Leeds United, was it? Yeah, he had a couple of years with us. I mean, we were very fortunate those two years because we had him and Woodgate together. And the two of them together mm-hmm. were... Oh, sensational! Absolutely yeah. sensational. Was it fifty-four appearances for Leeds? I think, and he what two goals in that season? Them two seasons. So you know, for a for a defender, not 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 a bad record, really. Right. And one of one of them a header in a win at Anfield, so not bad at all. <laughs> so yeah. um, your first of your midfielders, eh, Gary? Well, that was a that was a choice um, because what I thought was. Rather than have two midfielders, I'd have a midfielder and a deta- attacking defender. Oh, okay, yeah. So uh, I thought being five aside, you could get away with it eleven aside, but I thought five aside, go alongside uh, Rio, I'd put Alan Anson in. Yeah, okay. You know, he had uh, what five hundred and twenty appearances. Um, okay, he's Scottish, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll let that one slide. Hey, but, steady. You know, <laughs> Back in the eighties, you know, he was he was he was one of the one of the top players. Um, Patrick Partick Thistle was it? He started. Oh, Partick, he started out yeah as a as a young yeah. man. And then obviously Liverpool, um, 500, 520 appearances, um, fourteen goals, league goals. Yeah. Um, Scotland, I'm gonna try and pick my brains now. I think he had what twenty six appearances. Yeah, no he, he, was, he was very unfortunate for Scotland because he was at the same time as Scotland had um, Willie Miller and Alex McLeish, who obviously were playing so well together for Aberdeen. It just, mm-hmm. you couldn't possibly prize them two apart because they were so good together that, that Hansen never really got a look in unless either of them were injured. Yeah, but I mean, you know, from what, 1975 till late 80s? Yeah. Know, to be in the squad that, that long... You know, nor you know, players of this day and age, they don't tend to stay around the the national league for that long. They they normally off or gone abroad or been touted to to European football. Yeah, no, agreed. Cla- class act. So we'll uh, we'll have him as you as your, your attacking defender or stroke your first midfielder. So uh, who are you going for uh, in just in front of Alan? Then uh, it's got to be Gaza. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. Without a shadow of a doubt, 300, 388 appearances, eighty-three goals. Started off at Newcastle in nineteen eighty-five with the, um, the, the the youngsters, um, and then obviously finish off in Boston United. You know, yeah. up in Lincolnshire, um, and then he went on to 
play for England, obviously. Um, 57 appearances, 10 goals overall, and then ended up in uh, management at Kettering Town. Yes, he did, famously. Not not for very long, to be fair. No, I think it was only, a year, it was only one season, wasn't it, before he, uh, before he started eating the, uh, the old uh, shandies again? Uh, yes, but, it's, uh, oh, I, I mean, unbelievable football. On his day, what a, what a player. Yeah. I mean, no, nobody could come near him. And that, you know, that famous, famous goal against Scotland couldn't beat it. I, I don't know what goal you're talking about, Gary. I've got no idea. That goal never <laughs> happened. I've erased that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, Gaz, Gaz, has, Gaz has got to be the, uh, the, the one, one in midfield, definitely. Yeah, no, go with that. So, uh, that's it. He is obviously going to be contributing an awful lot of chances for your man up top. So who are you going for as your uh, as your finisher? Well, it was a toss up between Gary Lineker or Alan Shearer. Um, but it was a head to tails job on that one. That's a tough both, call. Both brilliant players. Both, you know, serve the country as well. And I had to go with Alan Shearer. More goals, more goals, um, more caps. Just yeah. Um, start, started his career off down at Saint Saint Southwest. Well, Saints initially. Yeah. Nineteen nineteen eighties, late eighties. Come through the ranks there. Um, played for Southampton as a professional. Signed for them professionally, and then um, ended up at Newcastle. But played sixty three games for England and scored thirty goals. So that's one of the reasons why I thought, yeah, have a have a no no striker up front. Yeah, um, I, I can't argue with it. To be honest, he's uh, he was some player, wasn't he? And I, I think, I mean, I always loved about Shearer the fact that he, and not just because it was Man United he turned down, but the fact that he had the choice between Newcastle and Man United. It was quite publicly known at the time, and he went yeah. and chose the club he supported, and that meant far more to him to play for them than it did to go chasing trophies, which he could easily have done because, let's face it, Man United at the time were winning you know, virtually everything. Um, and, and he chose to play for the team he supported. And I just think for that alone, I just think cr- credit to yeah. you, sir. Yeah, and I think, I think you know, with, with Alan coming through from grassroots football initially when he was at Wallstend, Wallstend boys, yeah. um, you know, playing from grassroots and, and get, going all the way through his ranks, you know, going back to the club he loved, it just shows that grassroots still stick within professional footballers. Definitely, 100%. I couldn't have put it better myself, sir. So, no Villa players. Did any Did any get close? Yeah, McGraw got close. close. Yeah. Um, I also thought about Lee Endry, but Lee Endry didn't really have that much of a England attribute. Um, was on the bench a few times, didn't score any goals. But Lee Endry is obviously Torbay Police's ambassador um, for them. Um, he comes down on occasions when they have charity dues, charity matches. Um, so you'll probably see his face pop up on the on the Facebook page and on the website occasionally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, regarding the Villa side of it, I mean, you got Yorkie, you got you know, you got Smoker when he came in, but you you, you got all those guys. But even though it was my home club, um, they was a, they they are a big, big, massive club, and I think Villa will do exceedingly well this season. But from from my point of view, you you've got to go with old school. Definitely got to go with old school. Yeah, no. Uh, I'll tell you what, we'll put Lee Hendry. We'll put him on the, as he's the president, and we've used his video a couple of times. It will put him on the bench. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just just to keep everyone happy. <laughs> 30 quid a game, it'll be all right. <laughs> um, it's funny you say it about Villa. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a bit of a call here. Now, obviously, there's been a little bit of a kind of forced rivalry with Villa and Leeds over the last couple of seasons, and it's uh, it's just rubbish. It's all over that bloody, the goal that never was or the goal that was. And I'm going to say now, I think Villa selling Grealish will be a masterstroke, and I think you'll actually do far better than if you'd have kept him. I I totally agree. I totally agree. I mean, you you can't rely on one person in one team to actually get results. No. Nah. Um, we we know that at our level, um, and you've got to become an actual bonded squad. And I think bringing in Ings and 
new guys coming through. Um, he's got, you know, he's got a hundred million pounds. The club is debt free. Yeah. You know, it's one of one of men, one of well, not of many clubs that are debt free. You know, the, the owners have done really well to get rid of all the debt that was left behind by Doug Ellis and other people following him. And I think, yeah, it, it's the signings that are coming through are the right signings. You've also got the youth academy coming through, and that youth academy is a big, strong academy. Um, you know, it's like Ollie Watkins coming from from Exeter to Brentford and then coming through the ranks into the Villa. You know, um, it, I don't think it'd be very long before somebody has snatched Watkins. Yeah, but we've got to hold, we've got to hold on to it as long as we can. No, agreed. We shall see. It all starts Saturday. We all get excited again on Saturday and then probably pissed off by Sunday. But, you know, we'll, we'll go into it with eternal optimism, if nothing else. Yeah, yeah. My, my lad's never been to Villa Park, so I'm hoping to take him up at least, you know, at least a few times this season. Um, he's been down to Southampton because he was with, with Saints at the time. Yeah. So we managed to get out and see them down there. Um, so he got to meet Mings and all the other players while we was down there. But, you know, to get to Villa Park, it's a total different kettle of fish when you go to a, a ground of that that size. Yeah, well, we've, uh, we're very forward. We've managed to secure tickets for the uh, first league home game of the season against Everton next week. So it's the first game that will be with crowds inside Allen Road, full full house, obviously in the Premier League for 16 years. So it's going to be, oh, it's going to be crazy. Absolutely crazy. Mm-hmm. It's going to be... Uh, we're going back to school. It'll be a lot. Oh, God, honestly, oh, I'm literally, I can't tell you how excited I am. And it's still 10 days away. <laughs> but Gary. Actually, sorry, actually, mate. Before you, actually, before I go, I yeah. want you to take a photo of your Stoke Gabriel shirt on at Ellen Road with your lead stop over the top. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll take it with me and we'll get a photo outside Ellen Road with the shirt. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Gary, you've been a great sport. Can I just say on behalf, and there's only me that does this podcast, I always say on behalf of Beat the First Man, there's only me. Um, everyone at your football club, everyone involved with your club has, A, been brilliant with me. They've Anything I've ever asked for, they've given me the information, they've come forward with stuff. You guys have come on here and chatted with me. I've had texts coming through with latest scores and results. You tag me on Twitter and stuff to make sure I'm always in. Fight. You've just been brilliant. And I, I genuinely, as a football club, love you to pieces now. And I'm so desperate for you all, for just for you guys that worked so hard in that last year to get that first win. I genuinely hope it comes so, so soon for you guys, because I know what, I've been there at a local football club when it, it's tough going and, I know what it's like and and I just, you know, I've never been there at a club where you've been exactly what you went through. And for you guys, I hope that victory comes so, so soon. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'll have some fun with it on here and we'll celebrate wildly on here and we'll have a laugh with it. But, you know, I know what that win will mean to you guys. Yeah. I mean, just just before, I mean, even the under-18s have been drawn in the Youth FA Cup and we've got Barnstable away on the 5th of September. So that's a big, big call for the under-18s as well. So... Yeah, f- fingers crossed for uh, all the club. Is that the that's the Sunday, isn't it? Yeah. Oh well, it only just turns out, Gary. That's the Sunday that we're down in Devon. Ah, there you go. Right. <laughs> Don't tell the wife. No. <laughs> we'll have a day trip to Barnstable, love. <laughs> you know that. I'll get in touch with you beforehand. <laughs> You're on. Gary, thank you so, so much for your time, mate. Good luck, my friend, in everything for the rest of the season. I know we'll be in touch and hopefully I'll, I'll get to see you over that week in September, even if we just catch up for a beer one night. But uh, for now, from Gary, Stoke Gabriel Torway Police, me, Reedy, it is back to the show. There we go then. Absolutely brilliant bloke. And I can you could only wish them every success. I really hope this week they can crack the code and get this first victory. Next week... We are groundbreaking. We will have our first female musical artist on Zooming In. Yes! Been trying for ages and Jen Dixon has stepped up to the plate. So next week, Jen Dixon, she's a solo artist, massive football fan. She'll be on air next week doing Zooming In. I'm absolutely delighted she's coming on. So look forward to that one next week. That's a, That should be uh, one to uh, put in your diaries, people. What's that? 
the name game. Ah oh, yes, of course it is. It's the name game. You only mean one thing, where we trawl the world looking for another brilliantly named footballer just for your entertainment. And no, I'm not running out. I've got heaps more yet. So this is a man who started his career at a club called Martigues in France. Uh, he started to move around France a bit. He turned out for Chateau Roux, Long, Nice, before he sealed him into Rennes, or Rong. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce that one, René. Uh, where he made over 100 appearances. It was here he actually won two caps for France with this name. Um, and he also sealed, him, sealed himself a switch to the footballing hotbed that was, or is, Marseille. He actually had a brief loan spell in England. I didn't know this. In 2016. You'd think you'd know this because it's pretty big when you get to his name. Uh, he made 14 appearances for Charlton Athletic. How do you know from Charlton, from Marseille to Charlton? It's a bit different, isn't it? Anyway, uh, he went back to Marseille before heading to Montreal for the later stages of his career. Solid career for this French centre-back. But the fact we are going to use his name for a cheap gag is surely a highlight. So, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Rod Fanny. Now, uh, again, previously we've done cheap gags where we've put pictures on screen that relate to the comedy name. Once again, for all you porn addicts, there will be no picture of a fanny on the screen. So here is a picture of Rod Fanny. There he is. He exists. So come back next week for another one of the name games. So the lineal European Cups, they got back underway last week in Germany. Both sides retained their trophies against lower league opposition in the Cup. Easy work for Dortmund. They retained the lineal European Cup. They saw off Vejen Wiesbaden 3-0. Uh, a certain Mr. Harland grabbed a nice hat-trick to start his season off. You know, if you're going to have an opening game of the season, grab a hat-trick. Ain't a bad start, is it? Let's be honest. They defend it later on today. So this goes out on Saturday. So on Saturday afternoon, they host Eintracht Frankfurt, knowing a draw is all they need to keep the trophy with the yellow and black. So keep an eye out for that one. In the lineal UEFA Cup, it wasn't quite such plain sailing for Susanna Hoffenheim of the Bengals. Yes, I'm going to continue doing it. Um, they travelled to Victoria Köln, looking to avoid a manic Monday. There it is, two Bengals references. Uh, after 90 minutes, they managed a one-all draw, meaning they do retain the trophy, but they needed extra time to see off the third division side. Doesn't bode well for retaining the trophy going forward, but... They've done it. So they retain the trophy. So Susanna Hoffenheim still hold the trophy. They take the trophy to Augsburg. And they will be hoping it's not Augsburg. See what I did there? Um, as they look to take the trophy back home with them later on today. So keep an eye out on the social media channels to see who holds those European competitions. So, but we've got the return of Ted, which can only mean one thing. And it is how old the reveal. Reedy, can we have a word, please? Of course we can, Ted. What's up, mate? Well, you put the photo up earlier of Herman Munster. No, Ted. It was Fred Herman's. Don't be rude. Trust me, Reedy, that was Herman Munster. Anyway, we digress. When you are going to put up such a photo, we need a warning. What do you mean, Ted? He's just a normal footballer from the 80s, and all you are doing is guessing how old he was. Reedy, it scared the shit out of me. The man was genuinely dead behind those big bulging eyes. Ted, come on. Anyway, how old do you think Fred Hermans was? Genuinely, I have no clue. I don't know where to start. I will just say 27, just to guess something. But truly, I am absolutely 100% stumped. OK, well, let's see. So, when this photo of Fred Hermans was taken... I can reveal he was 31 years old. Well, that's all very nice, Reedy, but please never put that photo up ever again. It should be used above fireplaces to keep kids away from fires. Ted, that's not nice. Anyway, have a good week. Let's see how your treble goes. I've got PTSD. I'll see you next week. Ted wasn't happy with Fred Herman's then. How many have you got that one right? He was a belter, wasn't it? Hello, Fred. Anyway, there we go. Another episode draws to a close. 51 of them done now. And we keep churning bits out for you. It's a big day if you're a supporter of a Premier League club as the season kicks off today. Good luck to you all. A 
Apart from any Man United fans, I wish you no luck in the world, especially today. Enjoy your season, but I hope today turns out horribly, horribly wrong for you. I realise this could backfire on me massively. Uh, if you did enjoy today's show, please click the subscribe button down, down below. It'll mean the world. Do give us a like, because honestly, they, it's just a little show of appreciation. It takes you about two seconds to do, but it just means I know it's still going well. And whatever you do, do not forget the little bell. Otherwise, you'll miss the next episode. We don't want that, do we? But for now, as always, it's ding ding. Next stop, Saturday, the 21st of August, for what will be not only episode 52, but a momentous day. I'm going back to a football ground. Stay safe, everybody. See you next week.